The newest version of Next.js adds a bunch of additional TypeScript related utilities that make it much easier to work with, and they add some really nice type safety features that I've been waiting for for a while. On top of that, they changed around how they do linting inside the project to make it much easier, and overall, while this is a minor update, it majorly changes how I write my Next.js code. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And while there's quite a few changes in the newest version of Next.js, the two big ones I wanna talk about are their TypeScript improvements as well as their linting changes. But the majority of this is gonna be focused on these TypeScript improvements. Now, the very first thing is that typed routes are stable. And essentially that means I can get type safety for all of my different routes. All you need to do to enable this is go into your Next.js config, where you see here, you can just type typed routes and set that to true. And now you're gonna get type safety for all of the different routes in your application. So for example, if I were to go to this layout, this layout has links inside my application. And if I were to try to write out a link that goes to an href that doesn't exist, I'm going to get an error for doing that. You can see right here, href, that is not a valid route. It's showing me that I have an error. And if I change it to a valid route, you can now see it fixes itself. So this is already a massive improvement. Now on top of this, there's a few additional things. For example, they have some route export validation if you're using TurboPack. So for example, if I try to do something that's an incorrect dynamic value, when I do a build, it's gonna throw me an error, which is a nice utility for me. But the bigger thing is these route prop helpers. Normally, when you write out your routes, you need to manually type out what your props are going to look like for things like children, params, and so on. But now this is automatically handled for you using these different route helpers here. There's three different ones that are implemented. I'm going to show you how each individual one works. So the very first one is going to be the layout props. So if you have a layout inside your application, a layout.tsx, all you need to do is use this layout props type pass it the actual route that you're using, and this will give you type safety on this props object. You can see here, if I type props dot, you can see I have access to children because this is a layout, so it has children, as well as params, which in my case is just a promise that returns an empty object because there are no params. So essentially there are no params, so I don't have to worry about this portion. The nice thing about this is if you do these things like nested routes and so on, and you have these different parallel routes, we can see here an example of parallel routes, you can see that we get type safety for those different parallel routes as well. So that's a really cool feature that's implemented as well. And just to show you what that looks like, I can create a parallel route inside this section. So we can say at child, or we'll just give it a random name. We'll say test. And inside of here, page.tsx. There we go. Export function. There we go. Now we just have a page right there that is in a parallel route. So now if we do props dot, you can see I get test to give me that parallel route. So as soon as I add a parallel route, I now have access to that inside my props. That's a really great thing for layouts, but really where I find this most impactful is when you have page props because I write page props all the time. So not having to manually write these types is really nice. Here's a quick example of a basics for a page type right here. You can see we're using page props. We pass it the URL or the, essentially the folder path to get to this location. This is inside the parent folder, the parent ID folder, and the child folder. And you'll notice again, I get all the stuff I want. Props dot, I have params and I have search params. Search params is always just going to be a promise that returns to me essentially a string string record. So just like normal URL search params inside the browser. But my params here is going to be specifically typed based on whatever unique identifiers I have. So in my case, since I'm on this parent ID route, I get this parent ID property that is a string. Now, if I go a step further and actually go into this child object here, you can see this one has some more information. For example, I have a parent ID and a child ID. So I have access to both of those inside of my props. So this just makes writing out my props a lot easier because that's one of the most annoying parts of creating pages in Next.js, writing out all these page props for your params and search params and so on. This just handles all of that automatically for you. And it works just flawlessly out of the box, which is really nice. And if we look at the actual view of our application, I'll zoom this in so it's a little easier to see. You can see we can go to our parent page. We get all the information here rendering properly. We go to our child. You can see it's rendering this information properly. And when I do a search, you can see my search query is being rendered properly. So everything is getting rendered properly. I just have the props being handled for me. It's a little hard to see that. So I'll zoom it out a little bit more, but you can see anytime I do my searching and so on, everything is rendering properly. I realized as I was editing this video, I actually forgot to show you this also works with API routes. You can use this route context helper, pass it in the route that you're using, and that'll give you access to the params object with everything typed automatically for you. So that's pretty much the bulk of all these new different type related things. The important thing to note about how these type safety things work is you first of all need to have your development server running. If you don't have your development server running, it can't generate these types for you. So you're going to get errors for these types because they're not generated for you. 
or you can run this next type gen command that'll also generate the commands and types for you. But generally, if you're in development, you're just going to have the dev server running and it'll generate all your types automatically for you when it builds your site every single time that you save your pages and so on. Now, the next big thing that I think is really cool and important is that they actually are deprecating the next lint command. Normally inside your package JSON, when you create a Next.js project, you're going to have this lint command and it'll be set to next lint just like that, which is a command built into Next.js for doing ESN, ES linting and so on. But they decided they were entirely going to get rid of that and instead just put the ES lint config directly inside your project, which makes it easier to extend and work with. So now when you build a brand new project, by default, you will get this ESLint config right here. It's a very basic file, quite small, but it has all the different Next.js related ES con ESLint configurations and so on directly inside this file, which is really nice. So now if I want to modify my ESLint config to add extra stuff, I can do it directly in this file without having to do weird hacky stuff to add on to it. Also, the nice thing about this is we have the option to actually do more than just ESLint. We have the option to do biome as well. I don't see it inside of the documentation here, but if I were to build a brand new project using create next app, so I can just say npx create next app, and we'll just put it in a folder called test. It doesn't really matter. You can see, we'll just make sure this works properly. We have TypeScript, yep. And now we can see which linter do we want to use. ESLint is going to be more comprehensive, or we can use Biome if we want a smaller linter that is you know, using Biome instead of ESLint, or we can even completely skip the linter if we want. So depending on what you want when you build your project, you can choose now to have one of these different linters. And the really nice thing is it's just gonna give you those files instead of having this built behind this next lint command that you have no control over. Now, if you wanna to continue to stay up to date with the latest Next.js trends, I highly recommend subscribing to this channel because I try to keep up as much as I can with everything Next.js related. And I also recommend checking out my full Next.js course. I'll link it in the description down below. It covers everything you need to know about Next.js and I constantly keep it updated with all the newest changes in Next.js. So you know that you're learning the most up-to-date version of Next.js if you take this course and all the updates are completely free. So you just buy it once and you get all the updates forever for Next.js as long as I'm able to keep maintaining it. So with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.